So now we're going to talk about another type of uh, Kroger Mink defect, which is extrinsic defects. So previously we've been focusing on intrinsic defects. Intrinsic means again inside or within um, kind of a host or kind of our pure material. But now we can describe how impurities are going to uh, basically induce the formation of a variety of defects um, using our again our KV in the kitchen, not kill and avoid crew rink. So let's go ahead and let's think about uh, CACL2 impurities. So when we think about impurities, you're thinking about again solute in KCL, which is our solvent. Or you could also kind of think of CACL2 as your the impurities, and C KCL is going to be your host crystal. So let's look at how we can incorporate K into our CA sites. So whenever you're thinking about impurities, so let's go ahead and kind of draw this out. So CACL2 are our impurities. KCL is our host. But so our host crystal is composed of K1 plus CL minus K plus CL minus, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So when you're thinking about how these impurities can actually create defects or kind of uh, incorporate themselves into the crystal, we know that our cations must kind of sit in these sites here. And our CL ions, again, they have to be replaced here. Now, the other types of defects that can form, we could have, again, vacancies in K. We could have vacancies in CL. We could have CA in interstitial sites. We could have K being put in interstitial sites. We could have CL being put in interstitial sites. But these are kind of all the, really, these are the only types of you know, variations. And one more, we could have CA being put on K sites. So really, these are the types of defects that can kind of form uh, in these uh, kind of extrinsic defects with Kroger Mink notation. So let's go ahead and look at at least one example, and let's kind of write this out. So let me go ahead and erase this. So let's look at one, uh, one scenario where we are going to, actually, and let's go ahead and write out the other one. Let's do some other ones here. Let's do some look at some examples. I want to just cross these out so you're not peeking ahead. <laughs> so let's go ahead and let's try to cross these out as best as possible. So let's look at the first type of one uh, incorporation where we put, let's go ahead and start with CaCl2. You always put here, we're always putting our impurity first because we're incorporating this into our host, KCL. This is our host. And let's go ahead and start. And we're going to put and replace calcium ion where potassium should be. So let's go ahead and think about the charge here. So we're going from 1 plus to what? 2 plus. So that change is going to be a plus 1. So when this happens, what type of defect uh, basically can form to kind of compensate for this. So we need a, we have a positive here. So we need some type of defect that's going to create some type of negative. You always want to think about like being electro neutral first. So charge neutral, charge balanced. So what type of defect will give me a negative? Well, what about a vacancy in the cation? Yeah, that'll work. You can't really have a you know vacancy in the CL because this can be a negative, another negative. So you're gonna have to kind of uh, figure out, uh, or another excuse me, another positive. So you're gonna have to figure out something that's gonna be negative. So this looks good. So whenever you're kind of doing these defects, whatever the first you know in these problem statements, whatever you're kind of thinking of, whatever type of defect is being created, first let's be charge neutral. So now we're charge neutral, but now we need to be mass balanced. So let's and to be mass balanced, we need to look at each of the scripts. So let's look over here. So we have CA. So let's be mass balance across the scripts. So I'm actually, let's look at here, 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 let's look at here. 
So along the script here, we are charge neutral. But look, what about here? So CA, and this of course wants to here. So what I'm doing is circling essentially the scripts here, the scripts in X. So in my mass balance, CA plus vacancy, no, I need two CLs. So I'm gonna add plus CL, CL, X, and I'm gonna do two. So now I can see, oops, oops, I'm gonna actually go ahead and add that in red, if you don't mind. Just so, no, no, oops. Just so that our notation is consistent. So I'm going to add plus 2CL, CL, X. So you can see now, CA, 2CL, I'm good. Now, let's look on our uh, X, Y scripts, right? So what we're, when we're doing mass balance, we need to be mass balanced and charge balanced along X and Y. Let's go back here. Oops, excuse me. So let's go ahead and let's circle here. K, C, L. So how many? So we have 1K here, 1K here. So that's 2Ks. We have 2CLs. So in order to be mass balanced, we just need to put a 2 in front here. So you can kind of see that nicely written here. So let's go ahead and look at this structure. So this is a perfectly balanced, charge balanced expression. Look at, we have the positive one here, negative one here, X, we're fine. Let's look at mass balance. CA, CL2, CA, CL2. What about here? 2KCL. K, K, 2CL. That's it. So let's go ahead and write a defect where we have right here, we have calcium inserting onto an interstitial site. All right. So let's go ahead and write that. So CA, CL2 into our host, KCL. So calcium on an interstitial site because interstitial site, we're putting calcium. So that's going to be two dots. Again, I could do two vacancy k one so all right i'm looking charge balance that's looking great what about mass balance here ca all right i need to put my plus two cl cl x so let's go ahead ca cl2 and let's look at our last script KCL, 2Ks, 2CLs, I just need to put a 2 in front of that. Let's go ahead and erase. Perfect. There we go. So let's do, let's do another example. Let's write some defects with zirconium impurities in yttria. So which is the impurity? Here, impurity. What about our host? Here we go here. Host is Y2, O3. So let's go ahead and write some defects here. You can kind of start to catch along with what's going on. Just erasing. So hopefully this is getting a little bit more comfortable for people. It's very strange notation at first, but uh, you'll get the hang of it. So I'm gonna do ZR, O2 into Y2, O3. So let's look at the first case. Let's say I'm going to put ZR where Y was. So remember, what's my charge of Y? So if I go ahead and do Y is going to be, let's see, what's the charge? Let's do zirconium. What's my zirconium charge? That's going to be a 4 plus. What about my yttrium? So there's three oxygens here, so that's going to be six minus, so it's going to be three. So it's going to be three plus. So when I'm going from three plus to four plus, what's that charge? So three plus to four plus, that change is going to be one. 
plus let's do a vacancy in my cation why can't i have a vacancy in zr why do i always have to have a vacancy in y because i need the vacancy in my host i must have i can't have a vacancy in this so whenever you're having an impurity i can't have a vacancy in zr can't happen won't work so just kind of know that so i have my extrinsic impurity so i need a vacancy in my y that's going to lead one two three so i need to rewrite this expression here so whenever you're kind of doing these again so i have three minus so i'm going to put a three plus here because now i'm charge balanced let's look at my mass balance so zro2 i have three zr i have a vacancy here so i need three zr i'm going to have to actually have I'm going to see where I'm going to do this in a sec. Six oxygen, oxygen, X. I'm going to have to add three here. So now, three ZR, three times two, six oxygen. Oops, excuse me. Let me go back up here. Draw a function. Six oxygen. And then finally, let's look on the last side. I'm going to have y2 or 3 so actually i have three three y's here one y here so that's four so i know i'm probably gonna have to multiply this by two and so three plus one is four so four y's and then six oxygens right here that's it i'm charge balanced there we go let's look at yet another uh type of impure uh defect so i'm gonna go a little bit faster now and hopefully people can uh, kind of follow and keep up. But you can kind of see in these expressions that we are, again, we need to be charge balanced and we need to be mass balanced across our X. So remember, this is always mass balanced across the X. This is always mass balanced across the Y from our programming notation. What about this defect? CRO2 goes to Y2O3 and then we have Let's put zirconium on an interstitial. So if we have zirconium on an interstitial, what else can we have? What else can happen? So what's the charge on zirc? So that is a positive four. One, two, three, four. Plus, I'm going to do a vacancy in y. One, two, three. So I need to make sure that I've got a four out here. I've got a three right here. Plus. So this is going to give me three zerk, so plus six oxygen, oxygen, x. So you can see here now, three times four, four times three, I am fully charge balanced, six oxygen, and then now I just need to kind of put this tube out in front. So let's go ahead, three zirconium six oxygen and then i have four y six oxygen excellent i could also have and what we haven't really dealt with is one other type of defect so let's actually erase everything here what happens if i have five? so what if we have three z oh excuse me let's go ahead oops let me go down here. Sorry about that. So let's say we have ZRO2 and then I have Y2 over 3. So let's put ZR, Y, so we know that charge is plus 1 right here. What's another type of defect that will allow me to be charge neutral? Well, I name negative. So what if I put an oxygen and an interstitial set? This would give me 2 here. So, fine here, fine here. Let's look at mass balance. So, ZR, O2, so Z, 2ZR, O, so I need to do, so I need 2ZR, so I need three more oxygen. Plus three oxygen, oxygen, X, so here, so one oxygen, three oxygen, Four oxygen. What about our final guy? So let's do 
I've got 2y, and I've got here, this is an interstitial site, so that counts for nothing, 3 oxygen. That's it. So you can kind of see that there are lots and lots and lots of different kind of options here for Kroger Brink notation, but it all boils down to kind of the same thing. First, it's a procedure for extrinsic defects. Oops. So for extrinsic defects, one, charge neutral. That's the first thing. Charge neutral. Two, we want to be balance X, three, balance Y. And four things you can never have a vacancy in our impurity. And other than that, that's really kind of your only constraint. So follow these procedures and you'll be good to go. All right. So next time we're moving up in dimensionality and we're going to be talking about 1D defects, uh, which are edge dislocations and screw dislocations. So I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks. Bye.